my neighbor's house, which is roughly 500 feet away. And you can see the, uh, where they're, the heat's coming off their house, which is pretty interesting. So. Sleeping the tool attic. Woo! We're back at you again. Um, we've got another great video with a new, another new tool. We've got the Weber SC240M, not N, M, M as in Mike, not Nancy. Uh, thermal imaging tool, handheld thermal imaging camera. This is a pretty affordable option. I like this. It's pretty nice. I've had this for a while now. I've used it a little bit. Uh, hopefully using it more in the future. You guys know that I've done a video on the snap-on one. I like the snap-on one, but it's pricey. I think it's up to $1,100 now. So let's get this on the bench, take a look at it, talk about it, tell you the differences and whatnot. Okay, uh, I like the packaging off the off the rip here. And uh, just a couple of specs on this right here. Uh, simple. The uh, infra uh, infrared sensor is 240 by 180. Uh, visual, multi-image, long-life battery. I think this is an 11-hour long-life battery. Drop resistance up to 2 meters. And uh, let's take a look at the manual before we get in, dive in into the uh, deal. Very simple tool, in my opinion, uh, to use. Uh, I always look at these ones really quick, but this has a uh, just your digital camera, infrared, ends, LED lamp, imaging capture trigger, screen, photo library, navigation key, on-off, return key, LED. Pretty simple, to be honest with you. Pretty simple. A uh, couple things to note on this is it has a 64 gig internal, and then here's the differences right here between um, the SEM240, I believe. Uh, let me look here. Did I get, the, oh yeah, I, I skipped a page. So here's the differences between their models. They have three different models. This has a 2.8, they all have 2.8 inch, eight, eight inch screens. The 240M and the 240H, which I think it's a 240M has no not doesn't have two megapixels. Uh, they're all 240 by 180. The difference is the temperature. One goes up to 350 degrees. One goes up to uh, 550 Celsius, which is around a thousand or uh, yeah around a thousand um, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, this is kind of interesting, actually. The numbers are wrong on this. To be honest with you, so the 240M N, which is the same camera as this with a 16 gig, 16 gig internal, goes up to 550. The 240M goes up to a thousand. The 240H only goes up to 550 or 350. So I think they got that wrong in the book. I'm actually pretty sure. We switch over here real quick. You see the um, internal memory on it, 16 gig, and then 64 and 64. Uh, which is 128. So um, I don't even know if I've seen the 248. This might be wrong on this, but I do know that when you're looking, the N is the one that comes up on Amazon. So keep in mind, we are looking at the 240M. So all this center column stuff is is spot on. Uh, I don't I don't think this is right because on Amazon you'll notice that you look and these specs aren't the same on here. Uh, and then this also says charging time four hours. You see right there, 11 hour runtime, 15 hour, 9 hour, which on Amazon that actually says 4 or 6 hours on that. So interesting enough. But uh, yeah, the, this has a 20 megahertz uh, refresh rate, which is nice if you know, understand that. If not, no big deal. But uh, pretty simple op op operation after that. It, and 164 gig of storage on this is you can really store a lot of stuff, then upload it to your computer. It does have a USB cable, whatnot to go in through. So I know, let's stop looking at this. Let's get into the tool. So right here comes in a nice foam package. Got it spun around, got some simple stuff with it. Got your 64 gig, uh, 64 gig card that's in there, which I've already installed. Comes with the USB-C charger. This is rechargeable. Um, and then the tool itself, which is a nice robust tool. Uh, with a, it even has a tripod mount if you want a tripod mount it. I'll be surprised, I'm actually surprised that the couple of things, the specs it says on here, the distance is only supposed to be up to like 13 feet, but as you, you'll see here when I show you some pictures, uh, that this tool has actually got some different deals. Uh, we have two LED lights, 
infrared camera and then the actual camera itself. Uh, let's power it on. It will take just a second to up, uh, turn on. Just to, uh, hit the button, CP. Of course, it's not going to work on camera now. What did I do wrong here? Hold the button. I got to hold the button. I was just pressing it. My bad. Operator error. Mr. Dumas running the <laughs> trigger. So you see it pops up. It says v Vever. <laughs> There's a bunch of people in the comments going to be like, CP, come on. All right. So now it's going to initialize. You see screen initializing. It's going to take a second once it'll get popped up here. It's getting warmed up. It's got to get juiced up here. Once it does, we'll get right into showing you some pictures and talk about the options. All right, so now it's warmed up. So as you can see here, as we go over, and you can see the refresh rate, that's what I'm talking about. You see as it gets over here, how it gets warmer, and we get cooler over here. I'm gonna show us some stuff where I've actually touched. Um, <clears throat> see my hand, definitely. And you can see when it comes in to play, it's pretty quick. It's pretty quick, which that's the one thing about I noticed about thermal imaging cameras is, is that the refresh rate tends to be a little bit wonky on this. Now, very simple deals. You got you hold the button and like the much like the power button, turn on the lights, and you get the two LED lights in there, which is super simple, super easy to use. And then we have a playback button, loading images, and uh, we're going to talk about a few things on here. Uh, this is just some simple images I took of some electrical. You see where the hotter spots are. Uh, I took a picture of Henry. Show that. And just see that. <laughs> There's a picture of a heater. Um, and then you can see it shows the temperature on the side here as well, which is nice. 240 or 217 of the heater. And then it shows a minimum of 59 degrees on the temperature. So that is very handy. Now, the distance on this was, like I said, let's get into the distance real quick, and then I'll show you some of the screen options, the, the better options of this. The distance, as you can see, there's Henry right down there, and there's the front of my car, and there's my car, and that is uh, to my house from my shop, and you can see Henry's out there, and that is actually about 50 feet. So I'm actually kind of surprised that it's picking up heat signature. Larger items, but it still picked up Henry, and he's a 26-pound dog. If you see him right there off to the deal. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, it has no zoom feature. So once you have this on here, there's no zoom feature on there. So uh, you, once you see it, but that's my neighbor's house, which is roughly 500 feet away. And you can see the uh, where they're, the heat's coming off their house, which is pretty interesting. So uh, And it shows 92 degrees all the way across there which probably is pretty accurate. Once again, now we're gonna talk about some of the different functions and the screen layouts. So this actually has, if you know the snap-on where it has the um, dual layout so you can get the infrared and then you can see my toolbox off to the bottom there and you can see where the heater, once again, it shows you the temperature of the heater, your minimum temperature that it was had and uh, in, the, in the imaging here. Um, we also have time and date stamping on here, and you can see up here where it also shows it had a 207 degree temperature. So it gives you three different temperature measurements. And then it has a blend model mode. Blend mode, which kind of puts them in together. And let's go back here. Uh, back, back. Okay, so in order to change your images... You just scroll over here, and keep in mind, I'm doing this through the camera, so I'm trying to, let me take this light off. Maybe that'll take some glare off. That'll probably help out a little bit. Okay, so you see the different modes here we can go through. There's your blend. There's your picture-in-picture, -picture basically. And we can see the temperature changes, and then it searches all over there. So it shows you, you got that green arrow that searches for hot spots. And what that does is it basically takes you to a hot spot, for searching for hot spots. Uh, and then once again, we have the minimum temperature and then at, at basically an ambient temperature of what's going on outside, which is 
pretty close to being accurate actually 66 degrees is about the environment temperature of average so it searches around for that which is pretty cool then we have just a regular infrared or just a regular camera mode which it doesn't take temperature on that and let me show you i've tried to take i've tried to see why it doesn't it doesn't really take temperature it just takes a picture so i guess if you wanted to take a picture of an object what with this while you have it and it's a good storage device two megapixel camera is not going to give you a great resolution on it but nonetheless it is a you know decent tool for that so uh that's pretty much all that then you have then you have your palette you can change you can set your palettes visible mode oh i got to change this back to i got to change my screen let's put this in here ah you can tell i'm a noob at this now we can adjust our palettes you can change the temperature of your palettes however you want to set it up different ones so you can show more hot spots you can see over there that we have an outlet that's what that red spot is right there uh, so it definitely makes that hot spot more robust and uh, we can go that route we can go black and white uh, where it puts the white spots see there once again that outlets of white I'm actually really impressed with this camera, and for $487, I think it's a decent deal, uh, to be honest with you, completely honest. I think this is a nice tool for that money. Very robust tool, like I said. Uh, that's that's really all you need to know on it. Uh, in fact, uh, let's just go to the settings for the, the simple simpleness of the setting. Measurement perimeters. You got Oh, it's got a high-low load, so when it maxes out the tool, it also... Um, alert you for that we have photo settings temperature units which you can change celsius fahrenheit all that is date and time language display brightness auto power off system settings all very simple very easy to use and this tool is under 500 dollars. most thermal imaging cameras are expensive this is very similar to the FLIR. uh i can't remember what it is se5 or something like that uh light turns off there but man I'm excited to have this tool to use it. I have a case. It comes with a case too. Unfortunately, I left that uh, in the, at at a, at a in my car, and I don't have it right here. But it's just a nylon case to hold it in, or you can just keep it in the box in there, which a lot of guys will probably do anyways. But very nice tool. Very nice rubber oval molding. Uh, you know, like I said, two meters drop resistance. I think it's IP57 for uh, water resistance. Now the there's a cheaper model, like I said, and it's a hundred dollars cheaper. But keep in mind. That one doesn't have the run time on the battery. It's got a 16 gig internal storage, uh, a little bit different for $100 less. So you're getting, this is the tool that is 487. I will put a link for it in the description for this Vever SC240M. It is definitely worth the money without a doubt, in my opinion. Uh, this is, uh, so far, I, I can't complain about it. It's got all the options that I think you need that if you want on a, a tool. And these are definitely handy, quick misfire, uh, electrical diagnostics. You can use them for heat seater, heat seat heaters. Uh, these are just really nice to for seat heaters to get them done with. But uh, an awesome tool, nonetheless. So uh, definitely want to check this out. Um, you know, this sponsor or this is not a sponsored video, but Vever sent this to me and asked me to take a look at it and review it. And so I've actually had this one for over a month and been playing with it. And I can't find anything that I really don't like about it. It's does the job quite nicely, in my opinion. Stage charge, 11-hour runtime. I've never have, had to recharge this yet, and I've used it probably a dozen times, messing around with it and whatnot. Showed it to a couple different guys, but I will put a link for the in the description for the Vever SC240M. Like I said, very nice tool. Well worth the money, in my opinion. If you're looking to get one and stay off the snap-on truck, this is a good tool for you. So don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Ring that bell. Remember... Keep your hands dirty and your money clean. Thanks for watching.